Hello and welcome back to Distributions, the video series where we talk about generalized functions and how we can use them for partial differential equations. And in today's part 16, we will extend the definition of a distribution by talking about distributions with compact support. And it turns out that this extension is exactly what we need to extend the convolution of distributions as well. How this exactly works you will see soon, but first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please use the link in the description to download additional material for the videos. In fact, on my website you find books, quizzes and PDF versions for the videos. Ok, then let's start and recall what we already know for distribution t. Formally, t is a linear functional on the test functions, but you already know we can see the distributions as an extension of the locally integrable functions. And in this sense, we can also extend the notion support from functions to distributions. We have discussed that in the last video and you should recall that outside of the support of t, the distribution t vanishes. Hence you could say, the distribution only acts on this closed set in Rn. And exactly this fact helps us to extend the domain of definition for a distribution. So let's visualize Rn and the closed set in it. So for example, we could say the support looks like this. And now by definition, we know that any test function that has support completely outside of this closed set gives us the value 0 when we apply it to the distribution. In other words, we can say that only the part of the test function inside of the support of t matters at all. So for this example, the right hand side of the test function could be anything, it would not change the result when we would apply the distribution to it. This implies that we don't even need compact support for the test function we use here. So you see, this is what we mean when we say we can extend the domain of definition for distributions. However, obviously this heavily depends on what the support of t actually is. If the support of t is the whole space Rn, we cannot extend anything, but if it's a compact set in Rn, we can do exactly that. Therefore, let's immediately go to the definition of this extension. So for a given distribution t, we can define an extended set of test functions. And the set we call curved E with index t. And now obviously our new test functions still should be C infinity functions. And let's denote them by lowercase gamma. So gamma is C infinity, but it does not necessarily have compact support. However, as we have shown in the picture, restricted to the support of t, this support should be compact. This means we can just take the intersection of both supports. And of course, this intersection is again a subset in Rn. Hence, this intersection now should be compact in Rn. So we immediately see by using this definition that in the case that the support of t is the whole space Rn, that the set Et is just the space of ordinary test functions. And on the other hand, in the case that the support of t is already compact in Rn, then we have the C infinity functions for the set Et. So there we definitely have more functions than the test functions and this is the extension we can do for the distribution t. This means that it totally makes sense to apply the distribution t to any function from et. And exactly this is what we mean when we say that we can extend the domain of definition. Hence any such function gamma can be put into the distribution t. And you also already know, often we write this with the dual pairing by using pointed brackets. However, now we need an explicit definition for this new application. Simply because usually only test functions are allowed on the right hand side. And we can solve this problem by making gamma into a test function by multiplying with another test function phi. 
So the only question is, how can we choose phi such that the left hand side is well defined? And with the picture from above in mind, this is not so complicated. There you see, we don't want to change gamma inside the support of T, but we want to change it outside. This means on this compact intersection, the test function phi should be equal to 1. And what happens outside of this set does not matter at all, because we know it's a test function, so it will be 0 eventually. So obviously this is always possible to choose, and maybe it's better to visualize it with the picture again. So here on the x-axis we find our intersection of the two supports, which is a compact set. And exactly there our test function phi should be equal to 1. And then since it's a test function, we go smoothly into the zero function outside. Hence what we get when we multiply gamma with phi is a test function again. And moreover, we also immediately know what the support of this new test function is. Namely, it's simply the intersection of the support of phi with the support of gamma. Which is compact again, simply because support of phi was a compact set already. So there we have it, this whole thing is a nice definition for extending our distribution t. However, one part remains to show, namely, is this definition here independent of the choice of the phi function on the right hand side. This means we have to show the well-definedness. In order to show this, we just have to take two different test functions and see what happens. So let's say we take phi1 and phi2 as a test function, and both should satisfy that they are equal to 1 on the set that matters. And this immediately implies that the difference of both functions is equal to 0 on this intersections of the two supports. Hence in the picture it means that the difference function here reaches 0 before we reach the intersection, and then it's completely 0 on the intersection and afterwards something else could happen again. But obviously also this difference is a test function, so it has a compact support. And now what we could do is to multiply this difference test function with our function gamma. And then what we get is a test function which has no support inside the support of the distribution. And there you also might see a technical detail because it might be good to have a safe distance from the boundary of the support as well. Therefore what we actually want is that the test functions are equal to 1 in an open set that contains the closed set given by the intersection. So this implies that the constant zero function also stretches beyond this intersection. And then you should see what we get is that the distribution applied to this new test function is equal to zero. Simply because the support of the test function lies outside of the support of t. And then we can use the linearity to pull out the minus sign and then we see that both test functions phi1 and phi2 lead to the same result. Therefore we have the well-definedness if we add the technical detail of the open set to the definition. Therefore now you can see the actual definition should read that phi is equal to 1 for all x in an open set that contains the intersection. This now guarantees that nothing strange can happen on the boundary of the supports as well. Ok, with that we have our nice definition for the extension of t and now the question is what are the properties of this new definition? In other words, is this definition still useful for our theory? So since we have extended the distribution, now we can see it as a map defined on ET. And obviously the values of t are still real or complex numbers. So this is not a problem, but you remember a distribution was a linear map on the test functions. And now the good thing is we don't lose that property, now we have a linear functional defined on the vector space ET. So this is very good, we don't lose the important linearity with that extension. And in addition, as you might remember, Another important property for distributions was that we could deal with derivatives. 
In particular, we have distributional partial derivatives which form distributions again. This means that d alpha t as a distribution can be extended to the same space E t. And now the question is, do we have the same formula when we put in gamma from E t as we have it for test functions? More concretely, this means that we have minus 1 to the power of the order of alpha times the dual pairing where we move our d alpha to our c infinity function gamma. And indeed, this holds for every gamma in E t, which we can show with the definition. This is not so complicated because we just have a product for the test function, which means the product rule for derivatives is exactly what we need. Okay, so these are the two important properties that explain that we can deal with our extension of a distribution like we do it with our original distributions. And now finally, we can come back to the title of the video, namely, what are the distributions with compact support? There we already know, if the support of the distribution is compact, we can extend it to all C infinity functions. So you could say, this is definitely the maximal extension we could have. And therefore, the space of these distributions gets a special name. We write that t comes from e prime of rn. So instead of d prime where the domain is given by the test functions, we now write e prime for the c infinity functions as the domain. So you can remember, here we have a subset of our ordinary distributions, but we can also extend their domains. And now it turns out that we can easily form the convolution of a distribution with a distribution of compact support. In other words, we can easily extend the convolution definition by using such special distributions here. And that's exactly the reason why we spend some time talking about these distributions with compact support. Indeed, how we can extend the convolution, I will show you in the next video. So I really hope I meet you there again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.